Tim tweeted, Jessica Simpson's forthcoming memoir is reportedly over 400 pages long, and I am very simply already obsessed. (laughs) (laughs) You should be obsessed because both Alex and I were lucky enough to get an advanced copy, and we can tell you that Jessica's book is a page turner. Joining us now is singer, actress, entrepreneur, and author Jessica Simpson. Good morning. Hi. It's so good to have you here. It's really amazing to be here. And I'm going to steal the jumpsuit later, and it's going to be a whole thing. (laughs) I mean, we're going to have to fight that. It's going to be a thing. (laughs) Well, listen, your book was released on Tuesday, so how does it feel to have it out in the world now? It is so humbling, exciting. Exciting. Um, I just feel like so strong, like in all of my weakness, like I get to share that strength and that courage and hopefully inspire people to open their own books in their lives, you know, like, yeah, so it's, it's like it's an emotional ride for sure. (laughs) I'm sure. And the book discusses so much about kind of what you went through being overly exposed and Mm -hmm. everything that came out, the fallout through that. So why did you choose now to share so much with the world? Right now, I feel like I have so much clarity and I've always felt like I'm the type of person that likes to connect with everyone. Since doing a reality show, I've invited people into my home. I've invited people into my life. Um, I just wanted to show that I'm not that perfect public persona you know like we all have our monsters in the closet and it's easier just to turn that light on and see that those monsters aren't as big as we are yeah yeah Yeah, you kind of reference this just now but you are an iconic pop star you know the gays we have lived forever (laughs) and ever and ever and you have newlyweds the show that is probably one of the most important i think reality shows that has ever come out um but what about you know looking back at that time do you ever regret doing that show because it did put you up in front of so much scrutiny no absolutely not i feel like that was my way to connect with people i feel um that Like, I don't even know why I would ever regret it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, in the airport yesterday, this guy came up to me, he was like, I just have a question, is it chicken or tuna? You know, it's like, (laughs) it like haunts me. Let me tell you, I was literally sending people the scene when you got, you and Casey get LASIK. I was like, this is one of those, it's imprinted on my memory forever. And and they did a great job with editing and like the music, it's like, I can see Mm -hmm. (laughs) clearly. No, it's so good, yeah. 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 It's so good. Well, a big conversation that's been happening this week as the book is coming is around your ex-husband, Nick Lachey. Mm -hmm. And some have said, you know, that show really tore your marriage apart. What do you have to say to that? I don't believe that the show is what tore our marriage apart. Mm -hmm. Um, Nick and I were very great at being together Mm -hmm. um, publicly and on camera. We were best um, at our relationship when we were singing together. I feel like we were at home in that place. But... As far as doing the reality show, we just kind of had fun with it until the end, until we started having marital problems. And I just can't lie to people. And I felt like I was being a phony. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't want to continue on with that. You know, like it just wasn't, it wasn't real anymore. It wasn't reality. It wasn't who we were. There was lots of eye rolling and that was real stuff. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you both have moved on. You both are remarried. You have a lovely husband, Eric, who we both met. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and Nick is also remarried to Vanessa and they have a show coming out. I think it's called Blind Love. So oh, they will do? you be Good yes, they, they do. So do you do you're doing see? a show together? Yes. Oh. Yes. Great. Yep. There you go. Hey. Breaking news. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think about that? And do you wish them well? I absolutely wish mm-hmm. them well. I mean, the thing is is that like so many years it's been so many years since we've been divorced yeah. and I'm at that place in my life where I am so happy for him. Yeah. I'm glad that he found happiness. I'm glad that he has joy and it wasn't all just pain. And you can see that it was meant to be. We had other lives mm-hmm. that were waiting for us. For sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, in this book, you uh, talk about some of your other relationships with various men in mm-hmm. Hollywood as well, uh, including Justin Timberlake, John Mayer, Johnny Knoxville. Are you expecting to hear from them? Would you want a, an apology from any of them? Oh, I don't think that Justin has anything to be upset about. <laughs> that was literally just like a bet that him and Ryan Gosling yeah. made. And it's like a little cute excerpt, like, like a cute quote about it. Yeah. Um, but like, it was just, it, it's a funny thing because we, you know, um, we've known each other since we were 12. So yeah. it was like a nostalgic kiss, yeah. you know, it wasn't mm-hmm. anything deep. Um, with the other guys, I mean, I think our relationships um, in our 20s, it's, we feel like that's what defines us. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of them did make me 
feel insecure, the the deep relationships that I went to into the long lasting relationships. And um, those were those were hard on me because when I love, I completely give mm-hmm. myself yeah. over and I want it to be forever. I never fall in love with anybody. I'm the person that would propose to you on the first date. <laughs> same girl, so, same. So, <laughs> I'm very open and I literally like, I mean, I'm just a lover, you know? So to have had, you know, relationships that took a lot of light from me, mm-hmm. um, that left me in a dark place. I had to rediscover who I was over and over. And it wasn't until later after I was married with children mm-hmm. to a, and having a great husband and a, and a very great life and sobriety that I could actually mm-hmm. like have the clarity to understand my younger self mm-hmm. and the choices that I made. Mm-hmm. Well, thinking about that younger self, I mean, you came up at a moment in pop music that I know was so defining for our generation, um, along with people like Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera, who have had their own troubles, albeit publicly while, you know, you've contended with things more privately. I mean, did you ever think about reaching out to them to commiserate with them? Is, have you thought about the kind of scrutiny that young female pop stars were under back then? Well, they still, everybody is still under scrutiny. I mean, you're putting yourself out there in a very public way and stuff's going to come at you and it's the career path that we all chose and we have to accept that the world is going to try to tear us down to build us back up because they want that story. They want that headline. Um, Um, But really, like, the focus is on the music, and I think Christina's done a great job with it always being about the music, and Britney's always on stage, and they all, everybody has their own thing going on Mm -hmm. and hasn't let the world define them as an artist. They've stayed true to themselves as artists, which is, I respect that very much. Mm -hmm. Something I was really struck by with your book is just the amount of sexism and body shaming that you've had to deal with from the time you were a teenager. I mean, it's like they didn't want you to perform at church because they felt men would lust after you, and then you also talk about uh, the Daisy Dukes and the mom jeans. It's like one thing after another one. So how do you cope with being under such a microscope? Do you feel like times are changing when it comes to body positivity or acceptance? Times right now, I feel so um, blessed to be back at it where everything is accepted, all body types, all people, and with extreme talent, and talent is the focus. But I have been body shamed a lot. Um, But we do that to ourselves even if we're not on a public platform. We're the ones that are standing in front of the mirror getting ourselves ready every day. And it's, it's important to know who you are before you walk out the door, you know, Um, and to not let the world have its way with you, you know. Do you feel like you've learned to cope with that microscope better? Yes, absolutely. I mean, before even coming out here today, I was like, I had to have my kids up in the room to give me a hug and just to make me feel like I am at peace, you know, I am at peace with myself and I am grounded and I am okay with my mistakes and I've learned from my mistakes. I've learned from my choices. And it's really just about um, understanding yourself. And the book, Open Book, is all about just letting it all go and um, what the beauty is on the other side of the fear Mm -hmm. of the big monsters in our life that we hide. Um, It's it's just a beautiful way to just uh, connect with yourself before you walk out the door. You have to be at peace with who you are. Mm. Well, speaking of your kids, you write a lot about them. You have three children and a lovely husband, Eric. And uh, you talk a lot in the book about them and your own journey through sobriety and your addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, and I am a child of a father who battled addiction too. And Mm -hmm. he and I talk a lot about it now. So, you know, as you're thinking about the book coming out, how are you planning to have those hard conversations with them when they get older? Um, it's a conversation that I've already had with them, and they're like seven and six. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, because I knew that kids at school would talk mm-hmm. about it. Like, yeah. you know, I knew yeah. that some headlines would be correct, some would not be correct. It's out of my hands. Um, that's why it's so amazing to have my own written words, mm-hmm. because it's my story, it's my truth, and nobody else can tell me what my heart feels, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? And with my children, um, they know mommy doesn't drink wine, and 
because it makes her too silly, you know. But for me, alcohol was never, it never made me mean. People didn't know that I had a problem. And they knew towards the end that it was getting to be too much that I was not being myself Mm -hmm. and I wasn't present in a room. And that's very not me. Mm -hmm. I am very connected. So um, when I explained it to my kids, they really understood mommy's just living her best life. (laughs) (laughs) At what age do you think you'll be ready for them to read the book? Oh, Maxwell already asked me this oh, well. morning. <laughs> she goes, so it's out now, Mom. I need one by the by my bedside. It's a chapter book. I am reading chapter books now. Oh. You know, so we'll just have to pick and choose what chapters yes. we read. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So, you know, this year marks 10 years with your husband, Eric, who's in the book, as we've noted. And he has a really amazing moment where he comes out in support of you in your own sobriety. So how's that journey been for the two of you? It has been unbelievable. I mean, we already were soulfully connected and we had a good time. Like, mm-hmm. like we had a blast. We had our friends over all the time. We, you know, would go to St. Bart's and we'd travel and just like be a fun young party couple, you know? Like, and it wasn't ever like hardcore partying by any means. It was just something that snuck up on me that I um, had to face and surrender to. Mm. All right, well, we're gonna get into more of that after our break, so stick with us. We're really yes. excited we to dive We have much more. more to talk about. A lot more. <laughs> so up next, more with Jessica Simpson, her new music, her fashion line, and of course, her relationship with the great Dolly Parton. Stay tuned. Yay! We're obsessed. Welcome back. Well, we've got so much we wanted to ask Jessica Simpson. We needed two whole segments. So we're just gonna (laughs) continue with all of these questions for you. Um, But I wanted to ask you about a quote actually that you have on Twitter uh, that you shared, which says, we must be willing to get rid of the life we've planned so as to have the life that is waiting for us. So take me back, what was the life that you had planned for yourself and how is it different from the one that you have now? Well, I mean, we all have dreams, right? And I always thought that it was being number one or um, selling a certain amount of albums or like it was very, um, it was more of a competitive nature where now I sit so peacefully at not being number one. It's okay. Mm. It's okay to not be number one. I mean, number three is pretty good too. Or number, <laughs> I mean, number five. I mean, anything in the top 10 is pretty good, right? I mean, but like, I mean, I, I feel like I have been doing this for 20 plus years, mm-hmm. you know, so um, I'm kind of a veteran in so, many, in so many ways. So I've learned a lot throughout my life and what actually does make me happy. Mm. Um, and I think that what happiness is, is feeling the joy and the excitement of what you actually get to do. Like I get to write a book and help inspire others to live the most authentic, best versions of themselves. For sure. You know, and that's just, you know, there's, it, it takes a, it takes a lot of courage, I will say, um, to do what I've done, but we all have courage. And that is, that's my purpose with the book. It's like, we all have that inside of us. It's not just because I'm a public figure that I have more by any means, because I still struggle every day. There are still insecurities that pop up, but it's these voices that you can not let take over you, you know, and you can you can overcome them with your own strength. For sure. I mean, you know, we are talking most about the book today, but something we have to bring up is your fashion line, which took a lot of courage to launch, and it has yeah. become a juggernaut of mm-hmm. a business for you. Uh, and you recently tweeted that you're so excited for spring 2020. So tell us more. What are you cooking up there? It's very exciting what's happening with the Jessica Simpson collection. Um, we just now, like recently, lost uh, launched e-commerce. We've been doing this without e-commerce all these years and have still remained the top selling celebrity brand. You know, somehow I think that people can just relate. And I know I have been every size there is. Mm -hmm. And I go through the airports or I I look out into concerts and I, I notice what people need. I notice what makes them feel good in their clothes. So we're continuing continuously growing the business when i was pregnant i was like okay now it's time to do maternity okay now it's time to do baby i want to do these kind of snaps on the onesies and you know i can just put 
all kinds of perspective um, with what I'm going through in my life and add that into the collection. So now I feel at home with myself. So we're launching, we're, we're going to be launching a lot of more, a, a lot of home stuff, which oh, is, I is cool. Um, but just jessicasimpson.com is very exciting for me because it is a platform that I, you know, I hope to like motivate people to feel better about themselves and to let every woman know of every size that they deserve to feel beautiful and rock fashion. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, yeah. I think one of the things that fans will also be really excited about with this book is that you are releasing some new music with the audio book. Um, so how personal are some of these new songs? These songs are from a while ago when I was struggling and to, to I read the audio book and it was a very emotional experience. Um, and when you listen to the audiobook, I am crying. Wow. <laughs> I am crying. I'm laughing. Um, I'm just proud of my story. Um, but I really connect with you. Um, I, I really wanted to put a disclaimer on it. Like, pull over because this is a tearjerker chapter. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't drive and listen. <laughs> yeah. But to have the songs, I like it's like when I when I didn't have a record label, I was defined by my I, I literally like I've always had a record deal. Yeah. So to not have that, I was like, how do I make myself feel empowered not having a deal? Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it was like just take control of it and mm -hmm. you can do it in your own way. So hopefully I pioneer a way for others to put music on their audiobooks, whether it's motivational speakers with public domain songs or whatever it may be, but um, the music is the healer of all of it. And so to round it out with six songs that are very raw mm -hmm. and personal, uh, it, it has like, I mean, if I'm upset with myself or if I'm having a bad day, I have to sing back to myself mm -hmm. certain songs. And I just will ask my husband to put it on and I'll just sing to myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just like, okay, these words claim them, you know? And I, and I hope that, that people can listen to that, to the songs and they all have their separate IDs so you can go back and listen to your favorites. You don't have to listen to the audiobook all over again, you know? Mm -hmm. So the songs are like standalone and they come at the end of the audiobook. I have to ask, if you make your husband listen every time you need this moment, does he have a favorite song that he's told you about? Is there a song that he's like, hey baby, play, sing that for me because I'm feeling stressed yeah, out Yeah, I, mean, I think he like, his favorite song is Practice What You Preach. It's the second song on the audiobook and it is a very vulnerable song, but it was a love letter to my father. Um, and it's it's very deep, but it was how I was raised. Like, you know, our actions speak louder than words mm. in, in every way. Mm. Like what we do with ourselves and our lives, the doing part is the important part, mm. you know? Well, in the book, you also write about Dolly Parton. In particular, you write Yay. about her kindness to you and uh, what it was like to work with her. Um, there are some great behind the scenes stories there. Um, but have you kept in touch with her since your duet? I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, um, I do like have a number for her. Like, I don't know if it's her personal number. Like me and Willie Nelson <laughs> text back and forth. Um, but like Willie Nelson's an angel of yeah. mine. Yeah. Um, Dolly Parton was an inspiration to me because in a moment of weakness, she saw my strength. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I drank before singing live. And of course it was like at the Kennedy Center with the president and Steven Spielberg and everybody in the industry and all these artists that I respect. And I was going, my boyfriend at the time broke up with me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and right before I went on stage and I just froze. And so I let that defeat me and she could see, she knew my talent and she, I think she related to me in so many ways mm -hmm. because she's had a very long career mm -hmm. and she makes amazing, you know, amazing jokes on herself and has the last laugh on mm -hmm. everyone. And she is a smart businesswoman. My next goal is to have an amusement park. <laughs> really? Where would this amusement park be? I mean, I mean, it would have to be somewhere in Texas. In Texas? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, do you have a name in mind? Mm, no. What do you, think? Uh, <laughs> you got me because I'm from Tennessee, so I was like, okay, tell me more Dollywood stuff. Yes, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Dollywood is just like, I mean, you kind of can't get better than that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think Jessica Wood would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a little you'll, you'll bit have to sexual brainstorm a little bit. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is true, girl. That is yeah. true. Let's not go down that path. We'll talk about no, this later. Like, All right. So yes. <laughs> switching topics. Ride these mountains. <laughs> I'm done. Jessica can have my job now. That's great. I, I usually make the inappropriate sex jokes, but Jessica Simpson today, America. Yeah, there you, there you go. All right, so switching topics a little bit. This past Sunday, Jennifer Lopez performed at the Super Bowl with her daughter mm-hmm. in a really beautiful moment. That was a beautiful moment. How cute was that? So cute. That was, it was so cute. I hope people focus on that. Like, I mean, she is a, a beautiful mom. I mean, the fact that she's out mm-hmm. there owning that stage yeah. with that confidence. I mean, she is just an overall entertainer that I'm just like, I cannot even imagine how many yeah. fittings that woman has. Oh my God, so many. <laughs> like, it's, I mean, it's, I, I could, I literally, and she handles everything with like, so professionally. Yeah, she's incredible. And, and is a very incredible but artist, but Super Bowl, I mean, Shakira really rocked it. Yeah. I need to learn some of those moves. I think they will teach, I mean, you, yeah. teach you. But you beyond like their moves, did that inspire you to maybe have your kids join you on stage one day? Oh, I mean, it's the cutest thing ever. Mm-hmm. Maxwell, and because of my audio book and because of the songs, mm-hmm. she um, she's seven now, so you know she writes it all out. But she wanted to write down all of the lyrics so she could have them. And so I'm like singing the melodies to her, and she's writing all the lyrics down <laughs> to learn it. And um, she also had seen this really cute thing with Pink. Okay. Um, and they did a song from The Greatest Showman with uh, her daughter. She did a song with her daughter. Mm-hmm. And it's just when artists include their children, it makes them real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and their children are looking up to them and wanting to mm-hmm. be them. And to be able to give them that platform is really amazing. It's it, You're not setting them up for criticism because as a parent, you can guard them as much as possible, but to let them get up there and shine like Jennifer Lopez mm-hmm. did, I thought that that was just a really special moment. Magical. Magical. Really and her daughter, really, some, she, some yeah, vocals. yeah. I mean, Seriously. that daughter has Mark Anthony's right? voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> truly, truly. <laughs> well, before you go, we just want to play a quick speed round. So we are going to ask you a question and just tell us the first thing that comes to mind. So my first Uh-oh. question is, <laughs> it's, it's going to be fun. It's, it's going to be fun. Okay. No, no. Okay. I, so the first one is, what shows are you binge watching? Hmm. <laughs> I like BBC shows and, oh, and like uh, lots of like uh, crime. Like okay. Luther was one okay, that I really oh. got into recently. Luther. I couldn't stop watching okay, it. Okay, Luther. I haven't seen that. I'm going to check it out. Oh, you got to check it out. All right. <laughs> I'm going to try it. All right. So what young artist would you want to collaborate with? Mm. Musician. Young artist. I mean, there are so many like amazing ones, but... Um, I think doing something with uh, Shawn Mendes would be amazing. Oh. I think that he's like a true talent that really loves what he does. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's so there's so many. Like, I, I feel like, I mean, I don't know how old Jason Mraz is, but I've always been a fan of oh, his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's not as young as Shawn Mendes. No, <laughs> that's true, no. That's true. But I, but I yeah. do think that he writes from a very heartfelt place, mm-hmm. and I always love his lyrics. So I, I'm always listening to people's lyrics. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Adele is also mm-hmm. younger than me. And <laughs> we're we're still up. We're still oh Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right. long-winded. We, we just have a couple more of these. Um, apologies in advance for asking this question. When was the last time you actually ate canned tuna? Last week. <laughs> <laughs> because in my mind, it's chicken. There you go. <laughs> okay, and we have uh, one last one. If they made Open Book into a film, who would play you? Ooh, that's hard. I don't know. Oh, gosh. Um, who would play me? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Okay, who well, would, you'll, you'll have to come back. Idea? What about Margot Robbie? Margot Robbie, our producer just said. I mean, Margot Robbie can't be my younger self. True, they would have True. to have, they would have she to She could be my older ages. self, that's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so I'll, I'll go for the Oscar nominee. <laughs> okay, great, <laughs> perfect. Well, listen, it has been so wonderful getting to talk to you. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us. Thank you. Uh, Open Book by Jessica Simpson is available wherever books are sold.